The Nazca Lines of Peru have been an important part of the ancient astronaut theory since its beginning. Originally, von Daniken claimed that the lines were kind of a UFO runway, or a type of alien airport, where the alien craft landed and took off. When challenged by Carl Sagan and others on this point in an early documentary, von Daniken kind of backtracked on this and said that he meant that the lines were created as a result of the spacecraft landing. I never said that the extraterrestrial needed runways with concrete or something like this. My idea, which I developed in my second book and also in the book In Search of Ancient Gods, the picture book, was that some vehicle was coming down, not an interstellar spaceship, simply a, a, a small vehicle, and landing with an effect maybe even of the air cushion uh, system. So they don't need landing tracks, but simply by the landing itself, some sand and stones are blown away, and you have a simple track on the ground. And after maybe a few hours or a few days, they start again, maybe in another direction, you have a second track, a take-off track. In other words, he's saying that the spacecraft dragged on the surface of the ground as they landed, and that the lines are therefore the unintentional result of spacecraft landing. For the Ancient Alien series, however, it seems that they are back to claiming it was an airport. The lines look like airstrips. They start abruptly, they end abruptly. Looking at Nazca from the air, it looks like an airport. And it really does, because you have all these bands, wide bands, that look like airstrips that are laid on top of each other, but you also have these gigantic, long, straight lines that go for miles and miles over valleys, over mountains. Either explanation seems to fall short of explaining why these lines are sometimes several miles long, one of them being almost 15 miles long. It would be a pretty inefficient spacecraft if it took 15 miles for it to take off, or, in the alternate explanation, if it needed to drag on the ground for 15 miles before it stopped. We will look more into this later. In the meantime, I want to look at what I think may be the most ridiculous claim of the entire Ancient Alien series. At Nazca, entire mountaintops have been removed. I mean, this all requires machining. And I'm not talking, you know, a little wheelbarrow and, 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 a, and a, a pick. I'm talking sophisticated machinery because we today would also need sophisticated machinery in order to achieve such feats. They are claiming that this mountain in the Nazca region has been artificially sheared off. But what they are referring to is a plateau. Plateaus and mesas are naturally flat on top. They occur all over the world and geologists know exactly how they form. In light of that, it makes them spending so much time on this point kind of funny. There the mountain's cap comes up from both sides. Here it was flat. This is absolutely incredible. This is one of the most craziest pictures I made about Nazca. The crazy thing is, the rubble, the remains of that summit or that mountaintop, gone. It's nowhere. It's not in the valley down below. It's nowhere in the region. What happened to it? Okay, moving on to the lines. Nazca doesn't just have straight lines. There are also several images of animals, such as monkeys, spiders, fish, jaguars, llamas, lizards, and dogs. Contrary to what Ancient Alien says, the way that they were made is very well known. In fact, it's ridiculously simple. They simply moved the reddish-brown iron oxide-covered pebbles that cover the surface of the Nazca Desert out of the way. When the gravel is moved, the layer underneath is exposed which is much lighter, and the contrast of the two colors creates the Nazca line. If you were in the Nazca desert, you could create a Nazca line by running your finger over the surface of the ground. It would probably stay there for hundreds of years, too, because the Nazca desert is one of the driest places in the world, and it almost never receives rain. If it did, the lines would have been washed away long ago because they are so superficial. Well, if these lines aren't an alien airport, what are they? What is known are the basic beliefs about religion in the ancient Nazca culture. Likely related to the arid and extreme nature of their environment, Nazca religious beliefs were centered around agriculture and fertility. Much of the Nazca art depicts 
powerful nature gods, such as the mythical killer whale, the harvesters, and the mythical spotted cat, etc. Essentially, they worshipped gods represented by animals, which they thought controlled things like water and crops. I might add that they were super serious about this too. So serious that they decapitated lots and lots of humans in order to appease these nature gods. I think it's fair to say that the Nazca people were obsessed with beheadings. On their pottery it depicts crops growing from severed heads, and there are other things too that show the connections that they believed severed heads had to good crops. All that to say that these people were dead serious about farming, and if you're serious about farming, you must also be serious about water. And if you are farming in the desert, then it's off the charts how serious about water you would be. I mention this because it helps to explain what the Nazca lines likely are. First, let's take the depictions of animals. For the most part, all of these animals can also be found depicted in Nazcan pottery. They were the Nazca gods of water and fertility. If you asked an ancient Nazcan what they believed about the world and how it worked, they would likely say something like, we take hallucinogenic drugs, we cut off a lot of heads, all in hopes that the monkey spirit will help us have some good crops this year. That just isn't what you would expect to hear if these people were smack dab in the middle of a massive mining operation conducted by UFO flying spacemen. There should be some hint of that in their mythology, if it were true. But if it is true, they apparently couldn't have cared less based on their lack of any indication in their belief system. Moving on to the actual lines. In order to understand these, we need to know a few more facts. One aspect of the Nazcan religion was huge pilgrimages. Massive amounts of Nazcans would walk to certain holy sites throughout their year. There they would participate in big religious events. The main place that they walked to was a place called Kahuachi, very near the Nazca lines. For a long time, archaeologists thought that it was the biggest Nazcan city ever found. But slowly, they realized that it was never a place of permanent residence, but was only a place for all the pilgrims to converge. And what they did after they all walked there was, well, do some more walking. These walks are called processions when they are in a religious context. In the Nazcan culture, everyone got together and walked on these specific paths. The idea was that by getting everyone together and doing these rituals, they could appease these water gods. And even when the straight lines were not directly above underground water reservoirs, they were leading to mountains and other sites which were associated with the water gods where the people would then worship those gods. So, in conclusion, the mountains weren't shaved off, the idea that it was an airport makes no logical sense, and the symbols and rituals which were a huge part of the Nazcan culture more than explain the so-called Nazca lines. Thanks for your time. 